moving along at a slow clip along these record highs, but they've been record highs nonetheless. Today, one of the sectors helping us uh, to stay in positive territory are those gold stocks. Though really since September, they've come off pretty significantly. John Zechner of Jay Zechner Associates joins us now. And John, this is one of the sectors that you're looking at, uh, those gold stocks to kind of pick up some exposure. Take us into your thinking. Yeah, Amber, it's not like we're uh, hugely bullish on the gold stocks at this point, but we've been underweight for a while, and the headwinds have been sort of logical. I mean, the U.S. is sort of the, the strongest sort of recovering economy globally right now, which has led to higher U.S. rates, stronger U.S. dollar, and that's a, a major headwind for gold. Bitcoin probably stole a bit of a thunder, and then a lot of assets sort of switched across in that direction as well. But it's interesting, Amber, over time, I always look for when when stocks stop rising on good news, it's, it's time to worry. And when stocks stop going down on bad news, you're probably finding a bottom. And I think that's where you are with the gold stocks right now. I mean, the last couple of times when gold broke below 1700, I noticed the stocks really sort of bottomed out. The relative value of the gold stocks to gold is basically at what I, you know, probably a decade low. It's a, we hit this level back in 2016, which was a, a good buying opportunity. So I think, you know, what I'm looking for in this market generally, Amber, is spots where, you know, it hasn't been too frothy. And if you get any sort of pullback, any sort of risk, that there's, there's less downside. I think the gold stocks at this point uh, make some sense. So we've added, uh, you know, Torax, Alamos, B2 Gold, some of the mid-tier players, Kirkland Lake, just uh, the guys who are valuation generating cash flow and just I'd say still not a huge part of the portfolio, but I we were underweight and I was less comfortable being underweight going forward. And and I wonder if part of that has to do with, you know, because you look at almost every other sector chart on the TSX, they're at or close to all time highs, whether or multi year highs, financials. Um, something like industrials, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, uh, is it getting harder to find those, you know, five to 10% movers these days? Oh, it's absolutely getting more difficult to go out there and say, Amber, oh, this looks like a, you know, a double over the next couple of years or something like that. Because a lot of the earnings expectations are built in. And a lot of the expectations are factored in a pretty significant recovery in the economy and continued low interest rates. And let's face it, with this sort of third wave upon us, I think maybe you've got a few more economic risks in the shorter term that people might realize. The other sort of big picture thing, Amber, I think that's interesting is we're into the second year now of the recovery. I mean, we're sort of a, past a year of, of the lows. And, and typically, the second or third years are a little choppier. I mean, think about it. When a stock market drops like it did a year ago, you know, drop 3-5% in a month, you scare people out. You know, you have a lot of money on the sidelines. And once people suddenly realize hey, maybe the worst has passed, you know, the, the economic picture is going to start to get better. The, the Fed is out there with low interest rates, the government spending money. You know, the, the money starts to come in off the sidelines. And in the first year, that's what it did. And every, you know, every little pullback is a buying opportunity. You know, now you get to the second and third years. And this likens me back to, you know, 1982, 84, 1991, 93, sort of 2001, 2003, 2009, 2011, like similar periods where you're coming out where you sort of rock it upwards. And then interest rates start to back up a little bit. People look a little more closely at valuation. The expectations are built in. And you get some more chopping it. So we're not, we're not heading for the sidelines or anything, Amber. But I'm certainly taking money out of some of the areas that have, you know, run hard, where maybe there's a little too much uh, cyclical growth expectation. Uh, we had already reduced technology a little bit because the valuations are just so sky high. So you know, we're looking for the spot, higher yield, a little bit of a safer play, and let's. I think the expectation should be brought down a little. We're not going to see, I don't think, over the next 12 months what we saw in this prior 12 months. Well, that's an interesting point because what we haven't seen in the, in the past 12 months is a correction. And I wonder if your position and goal is to perhaps hedge against the likelihood that, you know, with these valuations, with the fact that it's been so long that we've seen a correction that we might be due at some point this year. Well, that's absolutely right, Amber. That, and I, I do look at it sort of with a hedge in the portfolio. And so the other actually hedge I have in the portfolio, oddly enough, is we've been underweight bonds for a period of time. And I'm, you know, I'm still sort of bearish on bonds. I think rates are going, you know, rates are going to migrate slightly higher. I think probably 250 to, to 3% is, is probably a good ultimate target for the 10 year. Uh, but having said that, 
you know, if you get any pullbacks in the market, if you get any more, you know, the Fed coming further to the rescue or anything like that, or any any miss in the economic data, you know, the bonds have had, it just came off their worst quarter in the U.S. since 1980. So I think, you know, we've got like a 4 or 5% Treasury, U.S. Treasury position in the portfolios right now. And I look at it as, you know, safety net. It's uh, not going to make me a lot of money, but uh, it may make a little of the markets pull back. And I don't think it'll lose a lot of money at this point. I noted that um, one of the sectors that has gotten a little bit of a resurgence are those tech stocks that's working today on both sides of the border. How do you think about that? Is that just kind of a bounce following a significant sell-off, or is there a chance that tech resumes leadership? I think it would be hard, Amber, for it to resume the leadership we saw in the past 12 months. I mean, the valuations are just too stretched. But I mean, if you look out the next five, 10 years, I mean, you cannot find the sectors of the economy, uh, so maybe some areas of uh, technology, healthcare, that are going to grow at the same rate. So yeah, the, you know, you can continue to own these stocks. I think you have to be very careful of the excessive valuations. I keep coming back to, you know, the, the Shopify's and the, the Peloton's and the Zoom's of the world. I mean, although a lot of them and the Tesla's are really pull back a, a long way, but long term, you, know, you, you don't want to be without a technology waiting. And uh, I think you just want to look a little bit more what they call GARPY or growth at a reasonable price uh, type of technology. So, and in any pullback, yeah, they, uh, this is an area of the stay at home trade comes back a little bit, you know, clearly they benefit, but with the, the stretch level of valuations and higher interest rates, I don't, don't see tech leading the way they did in the past year. Having said that, other areas mm. I'm looking for, Amber, is, is look for companies when I look in beat up areas, companies as well where the insiders are doing a lot of buying. And there's nothing to me that, is signif uh, that shows uh, management thinks a company is undervalued when the senior players are going out there buying. And I, you know, I look at a name like Martin Rea in the auto sector, Tourline in the energy sector, mm. CI funds. And the CEOs have been out there sort of or the senior people buying that stock in big time, which you know signals to me more likely that they uh, they see it as undervalued as opposed to you know companies that are using their stock as a currency to make acquisitions. 